Hello and welcome to Majorwood Studios. I'm Ryan Greenwood and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and that is a live stream. So um, and what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be modeling a spaceship in Blender. So this might take a few parts, we might have to break this up a little bit because I don't think we're going to get it all in one go. But basically what we are hoping to achieve by the end of these few segments is basically that you will be able to have made something very similar to this. Oh, bloody. Okay, hopefully we can put it back right there, we go. Now we are not going to be creating that exact spaceship that you just saw right there. That spaceship is from um, our Supremacy web series that we are developing and it's called the Iron Dancer. It's the main ship that takes, that's, it's the main ship that the crew are on and all the adventure takes place in the distant future timeline of that series. Um, but Hopefully, we are going to be modeling a, a spaceship to that same spec. Um, and it is in this, within the same universe as well. So let's just jump straight into it. So if I can share my screen with you right here. So here you go. This is... Um, Blender. Um, before we start, I am using version 2.78.5. I'm not using the newest version. That's purely just because I am more familiar with uh, this version. So for ease of use and speeding everything up, um, I'm using this version. So, but you can still follow along if you have the newer version. Uh, it's just that the, the, the screen might not look the same and um, you might just have to play about to try and find where exactly everything's moved to because it has moved slightly. But anyway, so this is, um, this is a copy of the ship that you've just seen, the Iron Dancer. Um, this is the actual finished, finished project. Well, not this one because I've resaved it out as a salvage ship. But the camera movement and everything, there, all the animation you just watched is on this this project um, so we're going to start with this I've got my little man set up here so it's for like scaling and the ship that we're going to make with that we're going to model because like I said it's not this particular ship is going to be um, one that I've already sketched out um, and I'm going to get that in I'm going to bring that into blender now and I will show you guys um, exactly how to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to a new layer. If I just press this button down here. That moves me on to a new layer. I'm actually going to move my man over with this. So if we click that and then if you just press M on the keyboard, we get this and then you can choose which layer you want to move into. Let's move them over here. And we will model on this layer. Um, Just press Shift S and bring the cursor back to the center. And so, if you just start in Blender, you just open a new project. You can get rid of everything, and this will basically be what you start with. Um, and if you scroll down here on the right hand side, you'll find a little tab that says Background Image. So if you check that box and wind that window down, you'll find this. And what we want to do is we want to click on the open button and that's going to open an image um, that you can use as a background image. Uh, usually, uh, depending on what I'm modeling, uh, I might import several images that I can use in seven, seven can't get my words out, <laughs> that I'll use in several different views. So I might have a front view of an object, um, a side view of an object, um, from the right, one from the left, and everything like that. So, um, yeah. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to just open a, a concept sketch that I've drawn of a spaceship. So if I click that open button, we go there and it's the salvage ship sketch. Let's click open image. This might take a minute. And as you can see there, nothing happened. But that's because um, we're in user, user view. Uh, and uh, although it does say all views, uh, that means all views apart from the user view. Uh, but we really are interested in that. We just want it to appear, excuse me, we just want it to appear in the front view. So we click front, just there where it says access, axis, no. um, and we click view down here, and point. And you'll see our image is there. It's not particularly very big. Let's uh, let's scale it up. And what I really want to do is I want to scale it up so that the little man that I've drawn to the right here, I want him to be sort of the same size as the little man that we've got. So if we just up. And, and so you move the position of the image uh, with these here. So this one's your vertical position and this one is your horizontal position. And if you look, that's pretty much bang on there. So that was pretty much the same size. So yeah, so this is the ship that we are going to make. I haven't named it, but um, the idea behind it is that it's it's a salvage ship. So um, the way I sort of concepted this this ship is I wanted it to be a little bit like a futuristic um, space um, tow truck mixed with a mixed with a skip wagon. So basically, what happens here? What what this is is like the top bit here. The idea behind it being that this is like the, the sort of tow, tow truck area with the the winch there and the winch hook. And it's kind of like the living quarters and the main sort of area for everybody who's on board. Uh, there is this like, this bit here in my head is supposed to be like a sort of crane, grab her arm, that kind of unfolds. Um, you, can't really, you can't really see on there. I mean, this is all subject to change as well. I might, like when we're modeling, because what I like to do with uh, vehicles is instead, for two reasons really. One, because I'm not particularly good um, technical artist, um, like you can see from the image, it's just literally just me drawing it. Um, yeah, so because I'm not a particularly um, good technical artist, um, I tend not to draw sort of front and side views and all the different angles. I'll just roughly sketch something that I like, it kind of gives me a, more of a feel of what I want, and then when I start modeling, um i don't tend to rely on this too heavily i like i like this image this is kind of the feel that i'm going for and something very similar to this is probably what will be created but if there's odd differences here and there uh something's in a different position or something like i'm not going to be too worried i'm not going to stick to this um too much so um i might put two rubber arms on or something like that but this gives us a, a basic foundation. And um, yeah, so like I said, this top bit is sort of like more of the, the tow truck grabber arm type part, part, part of the ship. Whereas the bottom here is the idea being that the majority of the internal bit here is it's just one giant open chasm and it's basically like a skip, like a giant skip. And what I wanted is that this this like grill here at the front is really more like a like a roller door, like a like a garage door, and it kind of opens up and then like a like a basking shot. It can kind of float through space and it can just like pick up the debris from from maybe like a, a battlefield or something like that. Um, and when you're modeling anything. I always highly recommend that you do sketches and you do concept art because if you don't and you're kind of going blind, 
you sometimes run into run into problems um, you, you kind of get stuck along the way and you might end up spending hours and hours and hours developing something turn it off go to bed wake up the next morning have a look at it and just completely hate it um, and you put all those hours of work in I mean this sketch probably took me like two or three hours um, but I went through like three four five different versions before I settled on this and I really like this idea so um, yeah I would really really highly recommend that before you do any modeling get uh, a piece of paper and a pencil and literally just sketch out all your ideas and and you might you might even find that sometimes you'll draw something that you really like on one image um, and something that you really like on another image and you can then just like literally copy and paste cut and paste those those pieces together until you get something that you're happy with so yeah this is i've had this now for a few days i keep going back to it every time i look at it i think yep this is what i want to make so we're all happy this is this is the concept that i'm going with like i said um i'm not going to stick too rigidly to it if i feel that there are bits that i want to change but overall this is the look and feel that i'm going for okay so let's start modeling so first of all i'm going to add in just press uh, control a oh no that's fine sorry shift a shift a guys <laughs> it's not very good start, is it so if i just press shift a i'm going to mesh and select cube it's going to give me a cube now the first thing that i do uh, when I'm modeling anything is get a rough idea of the shape and size of it the scale the proportions and everything um, They're probably not the um, It's probably not the geometry geometry that I'm going to use uh, in the final model, but it just helps me get a sort of size and everything so I mean if this guy's let's say this guy's six foot he's gonna sit in here. So this is like a cockpit area um so he's gonna stand in there so that's sort of like almost a, that's that's almost seven or eight feet eight feet tall so it's, it's almost about eight feet wide then so that's that like 2.4 meters how many do you reckon you can get on there five so roughly my maths is shocking at the minute um I reckon if we roughly say about 15 meters, because I've already got this set into meters. If you don't know how to set into meters, you basically go over to this panel here and you select uh, this one, this little thing here, and go to. No, that's not this one, sorry. World. Yep, it's the world. What world is it? <laughs> this is going really well. There it is, it's that one, the scene, sorry. And it's units, unit presets. I've got mine on metric. So, meters, please. Yeah. Um, what I am going to do as well is I'm going to put our reference sketch actually up in this corner. So, if we just go to UV edit and put, because you've already um, loaded the image in once as well, instead of having to open it, find it in your file structure, and reopen it again. You can just click on this little this little icon here, and this will bring up all the images that you've got. If you type in the little oh, rainbow wheel of death, if we just type in this little box here, uh, what we're looking for, we're looking for salvage. Spot. Is that it? Oh, there it is. So, so just click that. So that will always be up there and we know what we're what we're modeling with so I can say do this one. Okay, so we're selected on this. Let's have a look at the scale. So if we scroll up here. Scale and dimensions here. 
So I reckon that this, so let's start with the big skip area and the basking shark mouth grill grid. So yeah, the main body of it, shall we say. So if we just alter the scale to 15, tab 15, tab 15, is that? And gives us that sort of look. And if we try and get a similar sort of perspective as what is on the image, just press G and Z. Probably bigger than all that, the guy's probably a bit closer actually. I'm going to make it a bit bigger than that, actually. Right? I would say... I don't want to be too much bigger than that, but I'm going to go with 20 by 20 by 20. Um, by the way, is it like no, I don't know in the comments on the corner? Anywho, so we're on here, are we? So twenty by twenty by twenty. That's looking better, isn't it? We just have a look from the top view, the top view. Make sure it's mine is in the right place. Yeah, so if you ever want to move anything, it's G for grab, and then the axis on which you want to move in, the move on that axis, or if you just move your mouse, then you will, um, You're basically just move it anywhere, you know, you know, all at the same, all at the same time. But um, yeah, I think that, I think that's pretty good. Probably a little bit squatted to be fair. I think that if it's not as high, we we'll put it back to fifteen. Or yeah, I think I think I think I'm more happy with that. Yeah, so this is the first time that we've done um, live streaming. I don't know if it's even working, to be quite honest with you. I could just be sat here talking to myself. Um, ooh, sort of. But yeah. Um, let me just have a little play that, yeah, see if there's something like... Oh, I don't know where my, where my window's gone. Oh, we've got feedback. Okay. okay, I need to try and find out where my this is coming. Ah, I'm lost. There you go. So I found it. I'm back. Hey, sorry about that, guys. I uh, I lost my I lost my screen. Anyway, yep. So we're back in. We're back on. Yep. I'm here. <laughs> we're alive. Um. Okay. So. I've lost my screen again. I do apologize. I do apologize for this. Like I said, this is the first time that I've done this. Hmm. So, 
you just have to bear with me two seconds. I'm having technical issues on my end. Um, Um, yeah, I think I want to get feedback again. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is going really well. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back for good this time. This time I'm really back, I'm really back. Okay, so I reckon that's about right, the right sort of size for, for this piece right here. So then what I'm gonna do is Shift A, when I click back on the, uh, on the application, Shift A and I'm gonna just add another cube. And we've got the other right there. And yes, so basically now I'm going to move this, grab C, right to the top of the square here. And this now basically is the is the bit on top. It's this bit right here. Um, and I'm just going to scale this by eye. So if I press S and pull it out, it is pretty much the same. Okay, so I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to press scale and Y to scale in the Y axis. And then scale X to S, X to scale it in the X axis. And then if I press tab, I'm going to the edit mode, and down here I'm going to click on faces editing. I'm going to click on this face right here, and grab C to extrude that. Like I said, this is basically just blocking it out. It's giving me a rough idea of how all the shapes are going to fit together. Um, and that sort of thing. So cool. So I'm going to come out of that, I'm going to go back into this one uh, by pressing tab again, and then I'm going to press control R, and this is going to create a ring loop. I'm going to select it once, and then I can move the ring loop before setting it where I want it. So I want it, it's pretty high up, I would say, sort of third, maybe, roughly, right there. And this is just create this, this back bit here where the engines reside. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go back. That automatically puts you onto edge select as well, which so we don't wanna be on edge select, we wanna be on um, face select, which is what I'm gonna select right there. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna press E to extrude because I want that bit to stick out a bit further than the other bit. And then I'm gonna grab this top bit, but this time I'm not gonna press extrude because if I was to press X, if I was, I my ways out. If I was to press E now, that um, square right there would extrude up just like the other one did and you just get well actually i'll do it i'll do it with safety. so you'll just get that sort of shape now i'm not interested in that kind of shape so what i want is i actually want to just lift this so i'm going to press g and z and then it's going to create the sort of shape that i want so if you look it kind of comes up a little bit at the back and then you have this sort of sharp whatever that is <laughs> shape right there so first of all, I just want this sort of inclined shape. This, uh, yeah, flat wedge. Uh, I'm actually going to group that a little bit further up, uh, and then I'm going to add another edge loop. So Control R. I'm going to move that back up, and this is kind of like where this grilled um, air intake, space plasma intake, out, whatever sort of grill is so that it kind of feeds the engines or whatever um, and then because we're on it's automatically put us back onto edge select um, I'm going to select this edge right here and I'm going to grab Z and I'm actually going to move this one down and that will give us that to get this sort of gradual incline there and then the sharp incline right there 
I think looking at this, the the engines want to come um, come on a little bit further back and uh, grab Y. So and that's it. That's the only tutorial. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> This basically uh, gives us the basic shape. Oh no, I haven't done the uh, the cockpit button. Um, what I am going to do, so it's all in one. No, 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 no. Uh, So yeah, so I'm gonna do Control R and create another edge loop. This time I want it going in this direction. I'm just gonna set it bang in the center, um, and. For the bottom here, I just select this one edge. Oh, oh it's going there. Well, that's actually filled pretty well because that's kind of like the, oh, the door's right in the end, actually. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge as well. And if you press Control and B, that will create a bevel and you just drag that out to whatever distance you want. I kind of only want it to take up that much space. <coughs> oh god, excuse me. So this is basically just to create the cockpit area underneath uh, with a sort of walkway that leads back to the door. Um, I'm going to go back into edge select, select these two bottom edges, and do an extrude with E. You might spin it down a little bit larger. Now, if we grab I kind of had the idea that this went all the way through, but from that drawing, it can this, <laughs> this is uh, like unintentional. It actually looks like it sort of sweeps back here, uh, whereas I wanted it to continue all the way across, but I think that that looks better. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to zoom in, so press control and uh, with the scroll wheel, zoom in, and get right in here, um, and I'm going to go into vertex, vertices select, and I'll select these two vertices here, and then I'm going to press um, alt M, that's going to bring up the merge, and I want to merge at last. I'm going to do that for all this square right here. I'm saying on this side. So that gives me that sort of walkway ramp if you like down to cockpit. What I'm gonna do is just press control R again to create and then so that the cockpit is flat at some point. Oops, I'm still in and I'm gonna go up and Z access. Okay, now I'm just gonna have a look now so if I go into view and right view to see whether that's flat or not it's not. So grab Z. So it just really bad to its So now this is a really rudimentary obvious side, but this is pretty much the the sort of blocky geometry of what final ship is going to look like. So now we just take this, this is this is like our silhouette if you like. Um, and we just go in there now and we model all the individual pieces and yeah, <coughs> excuse me. So this is probably going to take uh, a very long time, um, and we're probably going to have to do this in a few parts. So what I think we'll do for now, uh, now we've got the basic shape, um, we've got our concept sketch. Uh, I'm going to pick an area to start with, and 
I think I'll do that one area and then and then if it will break for today then we'll come back and carry on with the rest of it um so I'm going to start when I'm going to start I'm going to start with the door start with the door right there and what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to build it in situ and we're we'll actually build it near this little man so I get it to the right scale. So uh, I'm back in object mode. I'm going to uh, shift A and add another cube. And then G and bring that over to that's not over cube, is it? Is that over the plane? No, that's not one. So just X to delete that. Shift A add cube. Right. Do it from the top. Yeah, just go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the cube and the guy, and I'm going to go view, and I'm going to go to view global local. Um, because what I'm going to do that's going to remove everything else in the in the scene because I don't I'm not really interested in all those other things at the minute. I'm just interested in this this part for now, um, and I'm wanting to do this. Um, that's on the centre. Is it? I'm going to grab the little man. Move him up. And that. Uh, right, so we're gonna I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squash that down and I'm gonna lift it up a little bit just so that it's the right sort of shape for a person to walk walk through. Um I'm actually gonna do this in edit mode. So if you press tab you go automatically into edit mode. That means that you can select parts of the mesh and push and pull these parts around. So I'm going to grab this back face, go back into right view, and grab it along the y axis. Just squash it. And this is basically a good portion of all modeling is just taking uh, usually a cube or a cylinder and manipulating the faces, the vertices and the edges until it looks like what you want it to look like. Um, so in theory it's quite simple. Um, but obviously it just takes a little bit of time practice uh, and dare uh, I say a little bit of artistic flair sometimes uh, to make something look really good. But I believe with time and patience anybody can do pretty much anything. So I've actually got the, the actual sketch right there in front of me. So I um, can just look you just can't really see the detail, well, I can't really see the detail in there, but um, so I'm just looking at what I've sort of drawn here with different versions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that and make it smaller actually. Because this is actually made up of sort of like two, two parts, really. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. Right the side. A quick way of, rather than grabbing that side, rather than grabbing each side and moving it either left and right so you get the right thing, and you're not, you're not quite sure whether you've got the centre 
you want to grab the, the both sides using shift and the front view and just scale that along the x-axis and move them both at the same time pretty nifty so i think this door is only wide enough for one person i don't think it needs to be much wider than that uh, i'm going to just grab everything with the a key and then I'm going to move it along the x axis just so it's in the center of our, our man here. Oh, actually, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do that. Move it up, but I want to move it down a bit because I need a bit of step there. Go in front and grab the seat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the center out. So, very similar to what we did before. Control and R gives us the lines. Pull that to one side. Control and R. I'm kind of just eyeballing this, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Quick control R, create seam down the center. And then I'm going to go into wireframe view by pressing C. And basically, this means that from the front view, usually you would only be able to select what you can see within that view. However, if we're in front view, I can press B, draw a little box like that. Oh, no, I need to go a little further than that box like that and I can select everything on all sides of the of the geometry. Press C again and go back into tall view. And then I'm just gonna delete that side of the of the mesh. So delete um, faces and delete faces. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to object mode. I'm gonna set the origin right there to the yeah, origin to geometry. Yeah, is it? Huh. Right. Oh, I thought that. <laughs> oh. Finish. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead, go back into edit mode, and um, I'm going to press control and click on these edges. Open to. Alt, sorry, sorry. Alt and select. Um, and then I'm going to Shift S and cursor to selected. So I'm going to put it in the middle of everything that's selected. Then I'm going to come into object mode and then I'm going to do set origin and origin to 3D cursor. Because what I want is I want my origin in the center but at this one edge um, of the mesh. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, I'm going to sort of span over here. I'm going to add a modifier and we're going to add a mirror modifier. And basically what happens with the mirror modifier is wherever the origin of the object is, it will mirror what you've got along that axis, along the origin point, um, depending on which axis you choose. We, it's only done it for us, we want it on the x-axis, but if you want it on the y as well, and you won't be able to see anything, because basically what it's doing is it's cutting straight across the center of that box and it's flipping it. Um, and if you did see it, it would do it. Would do it. So, yeah, we want X. Um, clipping, we'll put clipping on, um, and that's about right. So, now basically, what we have to do is we only have to edit one side of the mesh, and the other side will, will copy it. So, we only have to do half the work, basically. 
Um, and when we come in, we'll just go to Control R. That's one side. Bring it across. Control R. Set. Yeah, down. Let's go to front view. Okay. That was an alt and click. So if you alt click, you get the whole ring rather than just one, um, one edge. We go back to faces, we we'll set this face and the back face. This top face here. This is just kind of like just the bottom half of the door. And then there's another section that goes on the top. Then we we'll press X and faces, and that creates all that. Now, what you end up with here is like a little hollow section um, dug out, which we don't want. We don't want that. Um, so if we select, oops, sorry, we're going to edge select again. So at this edge and this edge, and click F, and that will create a face there for us, which is what we want. Again, click that one and that one. We can click, select the whole thing. And then just press F again. There you go. So there you have it. That's sort of like the bottom of our door. Uh, what I am going to do though is I'm going to round um, these two corners, or just the one corner. Which is done. Um, yeah, okay. Just going to do it is just going to right view. I'm going to grab that corner, not to pull it Drop that down, grab the seat. I'm going to select both of them with the select key and control B to bevel on it slightly. So, if you want them to get sort of like a curved edge, uh, the best way I find is if you bevel um, twice, usually does it, sometimes you might want to bevel a couple of times. Um, your first bevel wants to be biggest, and then you can uh, shrink down from there. So with this one, it doesn't need to be dra too drastic, so if I do that, and then we want to, to reselect again, but only the horizontal um, lines of what you've just beveled, horizontal edges. So. Control B, click here again, there we go. And then you get that sort of smoothed off rounded edge. You could do it again if you wanted. Uh, you would then again select all the horizontal lines, so you'd select all four for that. Bevel and all, all for that top bevel. Um, I'm going to do them separately actually because uh, this one's a bit bigger than this one because of the angle that we put in there. Okay, cool. So, now what I want to create is the next bit, the front bit. So as before, this time we're in edit mode now. So when I add a mesh, it's still, uh, when I add an object, sorry, it's still part of, when I add a mesh, it's still part of the same object. Yeah, so when I add a mesh, uh, so shift A, uh, and we add a cube, scale that, scale it down. 
and then we come out of the object because it's still all part of one object so you can press G and you can grab it see whereas before um, if you're in object mode and you add a new mesh they come in as two separate objects which for this particular bit we didn't want that to happen um, so yeah I'm going to go back into the front view. Okay, now I want this to start right at front because I believe this kind of like lips over the front. Oh no, it doesn't. I don't know I need to be. Oh no, we had a couple of minutes. I'll take a couple off. Just take a couple off, sorry. See what, what clipping does, I don't know if you just noticed, is that whenever anything touches that center line where we've got the mirror, um, it then sort of sticks and becomes one object. Whereas I'm wanting this to move across and not to do that. Yeah, and. Um, I don't know if me talking is just really annoying or a little bit helpful. Um, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway because I think that if I was just sat in silent, it would be even weirder. So. <laughs> It's just quite an awkward thing that to just sat in sat in my living room and talk to myself or my mother. I probably do it all the time but don't even realise it. To be quite honest. So now I want to grab all this that we've just done and all I'm gonna do is hover over one of the pieces and press L and that is everything that's linked is that one mesh will move together. So grab the Z and it on it or it's kind of Start. What about the bottom now? And then we'll go back to edge forward. So edge. Right. It's the bevel. So then we'll be to bevel it. So two horizontal edges. Oops, no. And then control B. We are going to put um, a subsurf or subdivide on this uh, at a later stage. So all that kind of like blocky squareness that you see around the bevels, that should all get um, fixed when we add a different modifier on later. Um, so my idea is, is that this kind of comes up in front and then we create a bit of the top. So I'm going to extrude that up to there. And then again. What I'm getting is that I want this that's not quite how I want it. Just in front of there. Oh, not left, not left, right, right. I know, so I want to create this bevel, but I want to create it internally this time rather than external. So I need to get this in more or less the same position. But I'm going to do this manually this time. So, okay, it's true to where all those marks are. Okay. 
wax this time. Then I can grab these edges back into edge mode. I'll grab all three for now. And grab Y and pull it over to the top there. Just for these two more, so I'll just shift, select, oh no, I get it. And just to give a bit of separation between these two pieces, I'm actually going to because the front view. Oh, oh I don't know what this smells. Well, it's this front are a little bit smaller, which it already is, which is brand new. It uh, it's definitely not the most entertaining thing to watch sometimes, I can imagine. Um, but this is this is it. This is uh, you're in the thick of it now. So I'm extruding this piece this time because it's coming over the top. Oh, that's in the right place. So I'm literally just mimicking that shape that we had before. Um, I think what I'm going to do is for the next video um, I'll probably do a little bit more without you guys and then when you jump back you're going to see progress uh, anything interesting obviously I'll wait for you but um majority of the time i'm probably just going to jump ahead a bit because i don't want to get bored of just watching me spin this around and extrude faces and edges and stuff so which is pretty much what modeling is though like i said before um <clears throat> So now what well, I'm gonna turn clipping back on now because this is where clipping comes in handy. It's where I'm going to grab all of these. I'm actually gonna do just to make it easier on myself. Cut the point count there. So I'm gonna cut those out. And then I'm gonna be able to edge select <clears throat> and pulling down alt, I'm gonna select that edge, and I'm gonna extrude across the x-axis and I'm just going to extrude right to the center go to touch and then they are now 
solid piece. So, right. Does the door, the steps sort of fold out? They actually sort of lock into this top bit. So if I create this sort of shape here. Control on Again, bevel that just to make it nice and neat. Yeah. So the kind of sort of style that I'm going for with this ship, like I said, it's sort of like a tow truck um, skip wagon in space. Um, control B. Um, is it kind of going for sort of a a supremacist, uh, not supremacist, supremacist, not anything. Uh, Serenity, Firefly, Slash, type thing. It's sort of beat up, run down. Look to it. A little bit like the Iron Dancer. Um, the Iron Dancer, I don't know if you noticed, I showed it here. It's got like rusted panels and scorch marks from where it's like the entry all the time so that's the kind of thing when we get onto it that's the kind of thing that, that this is going to have on it so now i'm just going to grab this edge all the way down here i'm just going to apply a bevel to this Again, control B to create the bevel. There's going to be one thread. A good way of looking, because sometimes I find that uh, the black lines, the edges, or the dots for the faces, or vertices, whatever, mojoing, kind of get a little bit distracting sometimes. So. Sometimes I find it easier to just um, go back into object mode and have a quick look around and see what you've got that you've created. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I do want them to be a bit more rounded on the on the sides here. I'm gonna go back in and select side. And again, control B. It's very repetitive, but um, worth it in the end when you when you get your final project uh, get finished. Right, 
้ให้ฟูฟูแล้วก็ pull the side those top side bits out a little bit more And again, like I said, with right at the very beginning when I was like, I'm not going to stick too heavily to the to the the, the drawing, um, is because you kind of feel things out, and it's it's sort of like a trial and error process whenever you're modeling anything. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good. I don't feel like we've got very far, but I am conscious of the fact. That this has been, this has taken like the last hour. So, uh, I'm trying to speed things up, which is why I'm not talking as much. Um, then that was just the um, Alt M and merge again. Control B for this. Quite a heavy devil on this one, I think. I'm going to do something there, let's go. And I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn to the left one. And, and. Well, they're out of cylinder this time. Basically, what I want is all like hinge at the bottom, so that the door, um, as you can see here, it's kind of like the door hinges down. Like it's supposed to, it's a bit big to fit into there, but that's because like I said at the very beginning, I'm very bad at technical drawing. <laughs> so um, we'll take y ninety. So that was R Y ninety return. I'm just scaling and repositioning this now. Oh, hello. What's this? Sorry. I uh, better just put this in the back.
Yeah, sorry, I'm not talking anymore. Am I? Um, I'm just trying. <laughs> I'm just trying to rush through. That's why. Uh, I, I, all I'm really doing is positioning this hinge, like I said before, where I want it to be. Um, and then I'm going to separate this to create a new mesh that I can have a new um, origin point, and then it can and then it can hinge. Delete that face, and then get in, and then select Alt, uh, uh, not really changes to edge first. Alt, ring, there we go. Nothing's back on. I'm going to grab X, for the Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create sort of like a nut looking end. So if we press I for inset, and then we get inset like that, and then we get extrude, but we're going to go inside this time. Like that. Then we press inset again. Do this from the top. Make it easy to see. Okay. Then I extrude again. Cough. Yeah. Then we'll click scale. I'm going to scale it in a little bit. I'll do it again. Extrude. Not as far this time. And then I'm going to hit scale again. I'm going to scale it in. It's probably a little bit too far. So we're going to put grab X. Get in a little bit. And create this dome here on the end. And then what I want to do is I want to inset this a little bit. And then extrude. Like that in detail design there on the end. And what I'm do is control R. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to front view first. And then set control R. That's it. Down. Just above the hinge. The face is made. Like that. And grab that. And then screw over the top of that. I'm going to almost follow this curve now, so we're going to do the screw again. Let's do the other two, we And then we're going to scale but only on the Z axis. Again. Scale it all in the z-axis. And again, oops, let's go, let's go, extrude again, so a little bit this time. And scale it all in the z-axis. And we're going back in a little bit. So grab that, move that back. What I quite, what I quite like is the idea of this being a little bit off center. So I'm going to grab that and move it down. So 
you get more of a bevel at the top than you do at the bottom. Uh, but I'm going to have to go in and change the other sections. That's easy. Just going a bit of detail to how the door opens. Because now what we do is I'm going to just face, hover over this, press L, actually press A, but I know that nothing is selected. Press L, so that's the only thing selected, and then I'm going to press um, Control P. No, I'm not. I'm going to press Alt P. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to press Shift P. No, you can press P on its own. I am. <laughs> Get there in the end. I'm just going to press P on its own, and uh, we're going to separate it by selection. And if we go back into object mode, we can select this, and this is a second object on its own. It's got the same modifiers and everything, but it's just its own separate object now. I'm just going to go back into this, and I'm going to rename this. So if you go on this little uh, do like on here, you can change the name of it. So I'm going to change this to door frame. Right. I'm going to set this one and then set this one. Yeah. What do I do with this one? I'm not going to touch the origin yet. I'm going to go in there. Though. Actually, yeah, I can. I can. Press and grab the edge tool. Alt select that edge. Shift S and move the origin. Nope. Cursor to selected. And come back out with tab. Set origin. Origin to the cursor. And um, you'll see why that's important in a second. Go back into editing mode. We're going to create another edge loop, control R. It's going to come right up to the edge there. It's first mode, move top. I'm just going to set all these. All those things. Now, I'm going to extrude these out a little bit. I'm going to press Z to make sure it actually go a little bit. Extrude Z. Z twice so that it goes up and straight down. And then I'm going to press scale Z and zero, and I'll make them flat on the top. Oops. Then we grab that, and grab Z and lift that up. Right to the top. We are there. Then we have to cut. Not sure about. Oops. Oops. 
Oh, about that. I'm just going to screw back to it. Oh, it's just So I'll show you why the uh, pink point was important. I think we need a dummy to go. If we go back out into object mode, um, basically what happens is your any object will move, um, rotate, or scale from the pivot point, from the origin point. Sorry. So if we were to click on this little gizmo here, and we would click rotate you'd see that you, it would rotate from there, which is exactly what we want it to do. And to rotate down, and then rotate back up. And close. Now obviously, it's zero would be in the close position. If we get up here, you'll be able to see rotations. We've got quite right. It's zero. Um, and we'd figure out what position was when we were open, and we'd just obviously animate between those two numbers. But that's why we put pivot point at the bottom, um, so that it would open and close like that. Um, all I really want to do now is shape the top so that it fits. Um, so it fits into this nice little shape, um, and then I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm probably going to finish this door off, not on camera. Um, Tomorrow at some point, or yeah, tomorrow or something. Do a little bit of extra work, and I will see you guys in part two. Um, I'll just show you how to do this door. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's um, some good enough. So it's a very similar process to before. Actually, what I am going to do is if I open the door slightly, so we'll just move the rotate again. Rotate it open slightly. Most like this object. Go into it. And then I grab all these faces here to create the shape that we're trying to mimic. Oh. And then I'm going to press Shift D, and that'll duplicate them. So let's see if I move them around. Um, and then I'm going to press P again, separate my selection, and come out of um, edit mode. I'm going to select just this piece here, 
I'm going to select this, the door, and then I'm going to press Control J, and that will join them together. So that piece is now within the door. Actually, <laughs> I'm not going to do that either, because I need to move the door first back to position zero. Then I can so just that, then select the door. It's important that you select what you want to join to at the end, like we've already named this door, as you can see here. Um, so we've selected the door last, so it's got the yellow border around it, not the orange border. So that when you press Control J, you're joining the orange border to the yellow border, and everything is now called door. <coughs> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select view, local global, and then select view, local global again. Oh no. So view, local global, and then just want to select the door. And then select local global. And go into edit mode. We'll click and tab, put the link on, well, press A, put the link on this. So this is where I want to see. And I'm going to select Control R. The line is almost perfect. Number two, just control R again to create the ring, select, let's select the yellow ring, and then you can move it to where you want, and then just click again, and you will position that ring loop there it is. Okay, then I'm going to go to edge, oh no, new edge, select this one and this one over here. Grab Y and move to that position. Probably want to do a top view for this. And the model. As you can see, I need to shot a little bit. What a nice seal, you don't want to you don't want to be falling out into space. That is a sir. Cool. That's basically how we get that, that sort of rounded level there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the merge verts again. I'm going to set that vert, that vert, and click Alt M, merge at last. Then we that one, and the one at the bottom. There. Oops, that's the wrong one. Oh, this is all cool, isn't it? The reason why I know I've selected the wrong one is because there's not a little bit of yellow line going that way. That way. That's the one. On that one. And select that one. This time, if I press Alt M, I want to, I want to merge at the first one. 
So that merge thing is which vertice you want to merge at. So do you want to merge at the first vertice that you selected? Do you want to merge at the last vertice that you selected? Or do you want to merge in the center? I think there might even be another option, but I can't think of something like that. Odd. Uh, yeah. oh, well, so Grab an X and we'll move that over to the line that. Well, that's where we oh, no, see so that's where we get in. Not quite sure. That's route to take here. Going to make another ring very close to that one. Show you where I'm set. That's a great topic. Actually, what am I going to do? Because I'm going to select these edges, just these edges. These are the ones where it touches that top section of the, of the door. Frame. Going to double them up in the other thing. Only a very small one. Because then what I'm hoping to happen is when I move this like the before yes, that's better. Yeah, it's just gonna move this a bit more. Again, I'm just selecting the bit that I want to move and grab X, GX. I'm moving it to where I want to be. 
in sort templates as easy as that. So yeah, this um, this ship that we're building, the reason that we're building it is because we are making a another supremacy short. Um, this one is set obviously in the distant future timeline, and it's a couple of salvage hunters, treasure hunters, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're on a they're on a strange planet, a hostile planet, uh, uninhabited by humans or werewolves. But they've been sent on a mission by some obscure individual to try and find a rare. Artifact. Um, sorry, I'm confused at that. Um, however, I'm going to run into this artifact. Shit, it's the fan. Yeah, so it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So, this seems to be a little bit out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one in line. And I'm going to create another. Um, and the point here where it comes out of line. And to do that, I'm gonna press K for knife. Oh, that's a knife tool. So that's oh, that's right there. Give these two points. And push it up. And the back view. And <laughs> nowhere near a straight line. But it's okay, so I can go on to these and I can go back to grab X. Give it one minute. Is it straight line? Yep. Back. The top. They have it. So now, in the mouth, they have that pretty shape for the top bit, just as it clips in. And we can um, select so that. No, we're not on that bit. We just want that bit. Press X, delete it. And then if we go back into reload, that of global B for box select, select the door in the door frame, view global local. You can see that fits in there quite nicely. And then as we said before, when it opens, 
I'm going to put some stairs on the inside of that door and then I'm probably going to extend I'm going to put a, um, an airlock on here because I don't think that's secure enough that'll come down probably to that position actually what's that? Uh, 141.2 so if we said 150 150 degrees. Steep, but yeah, that works. Yeah, put some steps on there. Maybe like a little handrail. Um, and an air off in the back. So I'll do that um, off screen. Let's just let me just save that. There we go. Anyway, there we don't remember that. Good. So um, I do that. So yeah. As you can see, it is quite tedious. Um, it's really long and drawn out and um, repetitive. But that is the beauty of um, of modelling. And uh, if you want to come on this journey with me, then by all means, please keep watching. Um, I am probably going to jump uh, pretty far ahead at some point. I think what I'll do is I'll finish the door, put the air back in. All the trimmings, maybe like a little keypad and stairs and stuff like that. So I'll really finish the, the door to quite a high spec and then um, come back uh, for part two and we'll start on the big skip area, um, the main body, uh, if you like, of the whole thing. And we'll really get into all that. So, other than that, um, Please, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, um, comment, let me know what you thought, let me know if you want to see more of this, let me know if you don't want me to do this ever again and you'd rather never see me live, um, that's fine, <laughs> just comment in the box below. Um, and we'll be back next week with another, another one of these. Um, Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next video. High five.